is the kind of semi-final dreams are made of. As in the top right hand side. We're gonna start off with the red Protoss player to kick this semi-final off. It is from Big Clan. Showtime. He is taking on the blue Zerg bottom left. It's Raynor from Clash. Of course, best of five in the semi-finals of ESL Open Cups. As we get this ready to begin. Strong gonna move down is gonna fake that hatchery. It is a pool first here from Raynor, so we'll see uh takes that out and now Showtime goes to check. Sees no hatch, and he's gonna go up into the main base to check and be like, huh, what what? And actually the hatch is gonna come down right now. So Showtime he has to check, he has to know what time in the pool is, he has to know if it's a twelve pool or not and how he should respond. And that's why you are able to get that hatchery down, because if that probe doesn't go up there and it's a twelve pool. You just can't make the right response. So you can try and block that location all you like. You just need to know 12 pool, 15 pool, 16 pool, etc. Proxy hatchery. Those are all you know little bits of information that if you don't get, like I say, you just don't react properly because you would maybe want a second gateway here or something else to prepare against this. Maybe you put the cyber core slightly differently to fall off and stuff. As you are going to see for now, a pylon coming down. So he's actually pretty serious about just getting fairly quickly walled off because of the potential lings that could come out early. As our ling is going to come through and chase down a probe, that probe might be in some trouble. It's going to hit the acceleration zone, but so will the Zerg lanes. Oh my goodness. Probe darts back. Yeah, I don't mind that decision. That works. Full wall off. No zealot here from Showtime. So just going to wait for the adept and... Uh, I guess for the moment, these lings are just going to come in and fight that cyber core. So, he started up Warp Gate for a moment. I think he realized he might not be able to actually save the cyber core. Okay, Adept is going to finish, and that's going to be good for now. But maybe he just wanted to, maybe he wanted to start Warp Gate, and then he cancels it. And now, now what do you do? I guess he's going to build something. Tech structure, Stargate, question mark. Both his pylons are at the front, though. So whatever he builds has to be low ground, and that Overlord will be able to see it. Hmm. Dept is going to chase those few Zerglings away. Now it's to the left. So they get chased out to the left hand side. They're going to come back toward the natural. That's the Dept going to be popping out shortly and just going to be seeing our probe coming around with it. Stargate on the way up in the Nats, as mentioned. It was likely to be. And right now, we're not able to take the low ground. Third hatch, Dept blocking that. It's going to shade through. He's going to see the drone coming back down for it. The Adept. Going to block it. Doesn't quite kill the drone off, unfortunate. Close to getting that drone kill. Adept's still there. I mean, how many times do you want to cancel that extractor rain? <laughs> He's like, I refuse to let it keep on building. In case I forget. One more cancel. Keeps it safe. As you do see, the couple of adepts are going to be, again, threatening to jump on top. Uh-oh, yeah. Okay, so you jump on top, you give up an adept for the drone. This little micro-war has been intriguing, to say the least. Obviously, if the adept shades are there, I believe you can't build the extractor, but obviously, Reno was playing around the idea of he will get an adept if that drone goes down. At this stage, he's obviously not had a third hatchery for way longer than he initially wanted it to be down. That's a problem, and he's made a few links to try and help with it. He does get the second adept, at least, but... And that was just a complete, uh, a complete round of chaos. Complete round of chaos. Well, we go into an oracle. It's going to be finishing up here in a moment on that natural. So it's going to be oracle number two. The first one, three kills. Sorry, those last couple of drones went down. Sorry, guys. I had to uh, quickly tab for a second and wasn't looking at the screen. I missed the oracle. My bad, my bad. Battle observing. Um, but the Nexus comes down, he is going to take a third base. Beckett is kind of an intriguing map because, you know, in all essence, it kind of feels like this map, it's short, it's meant to be aggressive, etc. But 
it can be difficult to attack into the bases of your opponent on this one. It's easy to hold out those choke points. So, in a way, you could also see this kind of game going a long way into some late game stages. So, it's pretty wild is what I'm trying to say. There's a lot that can happen. These two oracles make their way down the south. We're going to move into the main. Queens are here, gonna push the oracles back. Enough damage being done. The other queen's just gonna join up together. Forge, robo facility coming through. Our additional probes on the way with the plus one attack upgrade on that forge as well. So that continues out. As you do see, our probes just gonna transfer down towards the nat uh, towards the third base here. Well, both players are gonna have. A uh, fairly macro focus setup. I mean, should I um, check in to see where maybe a fourth base might be? Where do we take a fourth? I think we just take a fourth over here. I don't think there's a need to take it down here. Well, if you take it here, Showtime can push from there more easily, arguably. I don't know. Do you prefer it down here? Because then if the Protoss army comes here, you can go one angle, two angle, maybe even kind of top side as well. Compared to if the Protoss pushes here, you can kind of go one, two. Ah, I don't know, actually. I guess let's see where Renault takes it. He's going to build the infestation pit. Swarm hosts are not a bad idea on this map. Ledges, ravines, lots of ways for the swarm hosts to utilize the fact they can send flying units over there to deal damage. While obviously being, you know, on the ground and not being able to be chased by much themselves means they guarantee a getaway a lot of the time. So that seems to be Renault's game plan here for map number one. Honestly, if there's one thing that I've seen... Showtime really struggle with consistently. I really feel like Swarm Hosts are one of those things. Simply for the fact that I remember a lot of games with Vanier, who keeps beating the Showtime for whatever reason, keeps doing it to him as well. It just feels like Showtime just can't quite get the control he needs to, to deal with it properly. This Oracle uh, pulls back once again, is just trying to keep these as active as possible, trying to keep them doing as much as he can. Isn't this the best map ever for walking queens across? Hmm, I don't want conversation I'm joining into here, but I uh, I actually question. I mean, this this map's short, so queen walks are good in that regard. But your queen walks have to end up somewhere, right? And do you want to walk your queens across to here? Not really. Either they go through this acceleration zone, or they have to go all the way around there. In which case, it's not such a short walk, is it? So, I don't know if it's really that good because of the choke points. There's a oh, whole triple kill on the queen. No, just the double. That disruptor shot got them low, and the stalkers finished up with two of them before the transfusions came in. Nicely done by Showtime. Uh, now, just needs to make sure you can keep on holding off these locusts. Dealt with the first wave of this pretty well. Stasis Ward's going to catch just a couple. Disruptor shot is available. Are you going to use it on Swarm Host Locust? Nope. That's actually well handled by Showtime, not losing too much once again in these early stages. It's going to be seen now. Stalker starting to move through that acceleration zone. Through the acceleration zone, a couple of bowels going down. Sentries taking some shots. That disruptor shot. My mouse didn't move in time. Disruptor shot fired. Didn't really connect. Good splitting from Raynor. And there's a couple of Stalkers warping in again. This disruptor shot, similar to the last. It fires. Raynor splits last second. It's very difficult to track where you should be going with the disruptor at that point. You get a unit, and that's about it. Obviously, the acceleration zone makes the disruptors kind of dangerous. As well, uh oh, these uh, swarm hosts on their own. The Oracle's not activating to try and kill them off. And as you are going to see the Locust committing into this mineral line. It's a few Stalkers going down for this. At the same time, Roach Ravager makes his way through. Huge Disruptor shots. Takes off a whole chunk of Ravagers. Okay, then. Yes, I'll take a bit of that. Thank you very much. My goodness. All right, well, the Stalkers and the Disruptors back through into the middle. And they're going to press on forward here. Did you see a couple of queens off creep? They're in trouble too. Okay, okay. Another disruptor shot acceleration zone again. Speeding it up to try and chase down at the very end. But I'm getting a bit of confidence right now. It's, it's scary though, right? You get confident against uh, Swarm Host and it's like you feel good for a moment or two. And the next thing you know, Locusts just clean out your army or they clean out a base. And suddenly you have no mining left. And this is the sort of star that, you know, the game can just change in a second on. So it's, uh, it can be a little bit rough as the Locust is going to come in from the upper left. Another Disruptor shot. Again, those acceleration zones make it terrifying. 
Uh, an energetic ball of death just flying at you is, uh... The last thing I want to be dealing with is just going to be seeing nothing. Roach Ravager! Again, you've got to split all the time there. One Disruptor does connect on in. I mean, how many kills in these Disruptors? Ten on one. Ten. Am I even clicking different Disruptors? Or do you all just have ten kills? One. Two. Okay, this one has eighteen. And three. Okay, ten, eighteen, and three. I was going to say, jeez, did they all, like, if they all had ten kills, I think I just clicked the same Disruptor like four times. Good job, Wardy. This is why my micro is on top tier. Click the, I can repeatedly click the same unit, guys. It's just changing units is going to become a little bit more problematic, okay? So don't don't ask me to do that. I can't do it again. Disruptors are really difficult to click past. Oh, jeez, maybe I'm just tired. It has been a long day. All right, Stasis was set off by the Locust, so at the same time, the Oracles are going for the Swarm Host kills. Reno really didn't do much with the Swarm Host. Showtime really survived this wave of Locusts pretty well, time and time again, and... It looks like he's really getting past that stage now, so able to to progress into a better setup. Here comes the Ling Bane Roach Ravager. Is going to move toward the top. It's going to move through. Stalkers get set up, and just going to be seeing again a round of Banelings settling down on the top side. Disruptor shot fires picks off a few of the Roaches. Another disruptor shot fires. Doesn't quite connect. Our Locust gonna drop on down here. Our Stalker's firing away. This is just gonna be seeing the Spire building up from Reno in the main base. Again, that Spire going through. Plus two melee, Adrenal Glands, all of this coming out. So we're getting into all of our nice little upgrades at the moment. Well, I'm really going to get to a later stage game here. That's always very fun. I do you like where Showtime's at? Developing these four bases, and these are the kind of games between Showtime and Reno, which I think are very entertaining. You know, these long ones, you know, they're going to go late game a little bit, probably. That's got a lot of potential. I mean, there's the Stargate and the Fleet Beacon. What a way to start up our semi-finals of this ESL Open Cup number 68, I want to say, maybe, possibly. Close gonna fire up, gonna go to the other side. Just gonna see that swarm hose gets picked off as the locusts are gonna drop on in. And the game's out the front, gonna absorb a couple of shots, Stalker's gonna blink over. Just gonna be seeing the banelings continue to come on through here as again the locusts going down. Seven probes going in as well. Just gonna see the rest of these stalkers settling down too. Plus one air weapon's coming up, the cannon's coming in, 20 or 42 more links coming up with the greatest fire as well. These few additional spines also being picked away at. So spines taking some damage. This carrier is just continuing as we've got ourselves a greater spike coming in. Another spine crawler coming up. Plus three melee on the evolution chamber. Still just seeing our Ling Bane force. Towards the other side, gonna go in for a couple of these Stalkers. Stalkers taking some shots right now. Boom, big damage being taken. Now back around up to the top. Locusts are gonna come in, chasing those Stalkers once again. Thing, then Roach escaping away right there. Another Disruptor shot coming through. Two carries on the way out. Storm's coming in. Corruptors are building great Spires on the way. Uh-oh, Bane's over here. Did blow up, but building really on a few Stalkers. I mean, we're getting a late game. We're getting carriers and storm versus broods and corruptors. On a map like this, we actually might just have to buckle down and go 20, 30 minutes on this one. Well, 20 minutes, I'd definitely say. 30 plus minutes? Absolutely possible on Beckett Industries. The only thing about Beckett is it's a six base map, right? You get six bases each. So each player is kind of going towards five right now as Showtime loses one here. Maybe, maybe he's going down to three. <laughs> but the idea is Showtime's going up to five, and the only one he's got left to take is either this over here or this down here. Now, neither are really easy to hold, I don't think, for Showtime. Obviously, the easier one to hold is whichever one the Zerg is paying less attention to. Obviously, the Zerg would like to stop Showtime from trading there because, or to take in that base because he's playing less efficiently. So denying a base pretty much means the efficiency doesn't really matter. You know, if you get to mine from your base and he doesn't get to mine from his... Economy-wise, the game is going in your favor. As Corruptor's coming through, the extra Spire is building as well. Here comes our Ling Bane Roach. Moving on in, those Stalkers. Just going to keep on blinking back. 
of those probes going down. We do have the Banes being picked away at. And just going to see the Roachling continuing as well. These Archon Stalkers all setting up here. The carrier's coming through. And these few Roaches being picked off as well. So nicely handled. Now we do see some additional Banes of Raynor making their way up to the top side here as these cannons are going to fire up a storm. 13 probes going down as we do have, again, Carrier coming up. I mean, the one thing Reno's doing a great job of is denying that economy. And, you know, in fairness, Showtime doesn't have a lot of money behind this now. And Reno doesn't have exact... Well, Reno just doesn't have a bank, but can he... He only has nine Corruptors at the moment? Um, that's an issue. He made a lot of broods right away. Okay, I'm a little worried. For, I mean, Showtime's kind of looking to fight. Reynolds obviously going to be looking to defend, and if he defends, I think Reynolds in a great spot, but can he defend? Well, 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 find out right now as we push on through. I said we'd get to 20 minutes easily, but maybe not. Disruptor shot starting off well. This line of sport crawlers going down as the Corruptors just aren't here to help. Big storm, as there is going to be a single abduct. Does finally get the carrier kill. Honestly, right now, the... Uh, oh, that's painful. One or two Banes just slipped by, and it killed the only High Templar left with energy. So he just lost his remaining Storms to Banelins that were very avoidable. That was just unfortunate. Just a slight, slight inch further back, and the Templar would have survived. Okay, here come the Broodlords. There's Disruptor Shots going forward. Stalker's just going to blink. They're going to make a play for this. I mean, honestly, you have the damage output to maybe not care about what the Broodlords are putting out at you right now. Especially with the Archon count looking as good as this, right? You've got the uh, Splash Damage to work your way through Broodlings. The Disruptor count has been doing work. The Archons are putting in work. The Broods are all going down. And that means you got Stalker Archon against Corruptors. And that's enough for Showtime. Take game number one. Reno put a bit too much into the denial of economy. And not enough left over to fight the standing army. That is GG. Top right hand side. We're going to start with the Red Protoss player. He leads this series 1-0. It is Showtime. Ba -ba -da -bow. Taking on to the bottom left-hand side, the blue Zerg player, Raynor. As we kick this one off, we get this going. And we have a look to see just how this is going to go. All right, sorry if the game was lagging a little bit, guys. Just tabbed out messaging someone something quickly. And as we start up this second game, it was a fun start. What's happening elsewhere in the cup? I see Roddy out of game. I think Roddy was playing, oh, casting Marine Lord Clem. Um, I'm just going to quickly check the result on that. Oh, 1-1 one, one between Marine Lord and Clem. Winner will play here at Marine in the other semifinal. And that's all I see for the moment, so. Quick update on where the rest of the tournament is at. Hey, this is a cool first game. Um, back in Industries, interesting map. Showtime really showing us some resilience against those swarm hosts. Very, very nicely handled. All right, so we're just going to drop down onto the natural and just going to see our Overlord. Is going to be moving up towards the upper right hand side. As we get this ready to go. Stargate to open up with. Obviously, we've seen Showtime play some Oracles. Maybe this time we'll get to see him play some Void Rays. What is always fun to watch about Showtime's play, at least in my opinion, is that I really feel like a lot of Showtime's games are very much so a case of, you know, I always I always feel like it's never the same thing, right? He always has different styles. He has different ways to play the openings. He's very comfortable playing Oracle openings, two Oracle, three Oracle. He's very comfortable playing Void Rays. And he'll even mix in that Glaives every so often as well. And that mix-up obviously just makes it difficult to prepare for him, to figure out exactly what you want to do about it. 
Let's see what we get here for Jack and Atha. Again, to me, this is a brilliant Voidray map, but we have seen a lot of Playpool playing Glaives today. We're going to at least open with the Oracle. It does feel like Voidray is a little bit kind of out of... a little out of fashion right now. Adept is making its way out down to the bottom left. Two Adepts together. Coming through. And this is going to be seeing our Queen going to latch on. Put some damage out. Two Adepts going to turn it back around. So just going to see that Oracle Corona boosting away here. And, uh... Yeah, I mean, Oracles it is, into the Twilight Council. Maybe oh, Voidray is just out of fashion, guys. Am I missing something? Did I miss the memo that Voidray is not meant to be made anymore? Is it like new, is it like no Voidray week or something? Like, Bros was like, right, Voidrays are so yester, you know, are so like first half of April. We're not going to use them anymore. Like, hello? We've not seen a Voidray style like all day. And we've cast, I, I feel like it's fair to say we cast a hell of a lot of Starcraft all day today, you know? Two Oracles into Twilight, no Forge. If I'm not mistaken, unless I completely missed it. No, no forge. So is this just two oracles glaives? Boy, well, showtime just going to give us something along the lines of, I mean, more depths warping in would kind of point to it. There it is, glaives starting up. I mean, very similar to if you just go one oracle, one void ray into glaives as well. It's two stargate units into glaives. <laughs> Those oracles playing a dangerous game are just about going to escape away. Out up through the center. So up through the center they go. We do have our Nexus is going to be finishing on that third base very shortly. And again, the two oracles just going to come out to the left-hand side. Drones continue to come on in. Evolution Chamber building. The Roach run about to complete. And our oracles are going to go diving into the main base. First drone goes down, drops a revelation to keep a little bit of a track of that. And come back out up the left side. And we get active all over again. Alright, plus one missile upgrade. Coming in right now here from Raynor, building that up. I'm just going to be seeing our Zerglings are making their way. Out and around to the top of the map as well. Going to get a nice little surround here, and that's two Adepts. Going to get picked off on pretty much instantly. And there's that missile upgrade coming through. Just going to be seeing a couple of Evo Chambers coming in. And our Depths will continue to shape forward here. Queens, Lings, moving back a little bit. The Lings going to start to commit. Just going to see our Roach Queen continue to come on through. So that's just going to push that back. Robo Forge continuing to build. That Blink is coming up as well from Showtime in the back here. And that start as I miss our upgrade and our roach speed continues on in. Looking nice. Looking good. This double Oracle is going to make its way around in towards the main. So again, just looking to try and get a little extra done over here. Uh, Oracle is back in up the left. And it's a Spire opening this time from Raynor. So Roach is into Spire eventually as obviously Raynor... Is up against that plus one blink? I always feel like the spy is risky when plus one and blinks come in play, because if Showtime goes like poking and prodding with that, that's the perfect setup to get some damage done and to, you know, really get in on top of this and to do, you know, just a great job of things. It's going to see again. Robo Bay coming through. Robo Facility going to be coming. And that Prism is building on the Robo, so getting that up and running here. And do you have our Observer from Showtime heading through the center now. The couple of oracles on the right. Queens are going to come in. Oracle. Nally goes down. Yeah, Nally gets picked off there as the adepts come through and those couple of lings are picked off as well. On the left hand side we have got the uh, well, hallucination picked off. And prism coming around. Disruptors on the way up. Blink about to finish. Plus one coming through. Additional stalkers also completing at the moment here. There's a few gateways continuing from showtime into this main base. So yeah, getting these gates up and rolling. Now we do see a couple of drones already going down as the Oracle strike, and a few, a few of those workers already being picked off. 
Uncle's going to back it up. Roach is on the way in. Ravages are producing. 74 drones. It looks like Reno might be setting up and ready to go. Here comes the Adept. Still having that Glaives as potent for this stage of the game for exactly this reason. Like, Adepts don't have a major use, but two Adepts? Boom. Eight drones dead. Reno derping around with units, and you get nine workers out of two Adepts there. And that obviously just wouldn't quite be that amount if this was no Glaives. However, that Glaives early does come at the cost of everything else being slowed down, and now the question is, do you have enough? To defend against this army. Forcefield's already showtime. Happy to start fighting this. Dodging back from the Biles. Brings his disruptors into the fight. Oh, I thought they might hit an acceleration zone. They might have some acceleration disruptor fun once again here. This time around. Oh, no. Raynor. His army's being dismantled by disruptors. He's going to keep on chasing. though. He knows there's no splash available to showtime right now. He wants to capitalize. Prism says, no, -uh, you're not getting my disruptors. No way, Jose. And now Reynolds just going to have to crush on through. Now the new disruptors are ready soon. Disruptor cooldowns will be ready soon. Can Showtime get another major hit off? No! Denied by the target fire. New disruptors from the right-hand side. Can they get on top of these Ravages and help Showtime to hold? He loses one disruptor. The other does connect. It's a cleanup, though, I think, from Reynolds. He pushes on through. Corrosive bows across the army. And Reynolds' attack is going to work out here to take him tied up in this best of five with Showtime with a win on Jagannatha. Righty, alrighty. Let's dive on into the bottom left-hand side. It's game number three, and in the bottom left, it is showtime. I know, you're like, what, you bottom left? You told me like three times we're in the bottom left. Well, I just want you guys to know where you're at, because you're also in game three of this semi-final between showtime and Raynor, which is very good to be. Uh, it's a very good place to be, because what a series so far. First game, awesome. Second game, pretty epic ending. Third game... To be decided. Find out now as we kick this off. Can you guys tell I watched a bit of Dragon Ball Z lately? I feel like I've been saying a lot of like, find out now, or find out next time, or find out here. Like, that that find out phrase is, uh, you know, from the end of the episodes, like, find out next time. I, keep, I feel like I'm adapting it because I watched like 20 episodes of DBZ lately. I just feel like I, I can hear it in my own voice. I can hear it in my own head and I know I'm doing it. I feel like you guys probably hear it as well, you know? Alright, Queen coming up. In the main, just going to see the Zovi of Reno pressing through Nexuses. Setting up. And a couple Queens coming in. Stargate is coming down from Showtime in the main base. Again, that rolling as the Overlord flies on into the main. And, uh, yeah, a couple of Queens continuing out right now from Reno as well. So, again, those finished up. As we do have our Zergling Speed on the way in the main base. Again, that Link Speed started. I'm not surprised to see a Stargate again from Showtime. I feel like Showtime may mix in a single, like, straight-up Twilight opener at one point of this series. I would say that that's probably about it. I, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be shocked if he went to all five games, if this goes to all five games, and he just opens Stargate every time. There's a bit of a difference, though. Hello. We've seen you in the PVT cheesing a little bit today. But we haven't really seen you in the PVZ, Mr. Voidray. How are you doing? You're doing not so good. The Oracle's taking over your job. Yeah, it's been a rough day for Voidrays, hasn't it? The uh, the Voidrays stock is down. Everyone is cashing out and they're full on Oracle mode right now. But Shodan going to give us a little bit of Voidray love at the moment. As the Zergling speed gets going into the main. As I've mentioned already before, but just in case you do, just to make sure you guys are aware, it is still research. <laughs> you know, it's still there, guys. It's still coming in. We haven't we haven't cancelled it. Cool. It's fin it's finished now. Just wanted to make sure you guys don't miss a thing on that upgrade. Apparently, like I say, it's been a long day. If you're watching this on YouTube or something, which it might be, don't forget to like and subscribe. Helps out the channel a bunch. I really appreciate it. Um, please do take a moment to do that if you don't already subscribe or if you haven't already liked this video. Um, but I've been live streaming on Twitch for about 13 hours now, so. 
you're probably getting a little bit of a do lally cast from me. Um, I might say some things a bit weird. I might be a bit more like repetitive than usual. I might say some things that are more obvious than usual. And that's just the price you got to pay when there's a hell of a lot of good StarCraft 2 packed into a single day. You know? And to be honest, it needs to be. There is so much going on at the moment. Like, you cannot spread this StarCraft out because there's just so much of it. Like, th this is it being spread out. Having three major tournaments in a day. Yes, well, I say major tournaments, but you know what I mean. Like, three, three pretty awesome events. ESL Open Cup. Um, and then the two next qualifiers we cast today. It's, uh... I mean, where, where else do you put them? Like, every day is like this. It's just StarCraft, StarCraft, StarCraft. I, I tried to look at... Uh, and I, I even had, like, another event to, like, try and calendar at one point, And I just had to say, like, hey, buddy, no, I can't. They were like, what do you mean we can't run an event? I was like, it's just not possible. Like, there is no free time. And these guys are like, but I've got money to run StarCraft. I'm like, I'm sorry. There's just no free time. There's just too much StarCraft. I mean, not too much, right? But there's... I, I, I already was fully booked, which is, like, crazy. I think that's the first time I've really ever had to be like, sorry, I can't run an event for you. <laughs> like, like, how crazy is that? StarCraft madness. Yo, this build from Showtime, I should stop talking in that about that. Let's talk about this. I love this build. Um, this double carrier opening. So, I always like to refer this to this as the PVZ Battlecruiser opening. Because you know in TVZ when you go BC early as a Terran and you kind of teleport across the map and you're annoying. And then you just kind of bring it back home. That's exactly what this does a lot of the time. The carriers build. They're kind of annoying early and they go out and harass. And then they just recall back home if they get into trouble. Same as the tele BC teleports back home. And it gives you a really cool setup where these carriers harass and then you switch it up into the ground army. And you just have this really good mix of like sky toss and ground. And it's just another way to basically build up into that sort of stage of the game by the 10 minute marker of having like a carrier or two. Or in this case, you'll have four carriers and a good ground army, probably with storm and so on as well. Now, Reyno at the same time is nidusing. So he did not scout this as far as I'm aware. He just wants to nidus anyway. Now, as these carriers show up, Nidusing is going to be problematic, I think, for Showtime because, hey, he, he doesn't have, like, a lot of defense right now. You know, his, his game is basically revolving around this, but he does he does see the Nidus, so you should kind of know it's up and it's happening. He's built a lot of, a bunch of sag defenses over here. He's starting to at least Stasis Ward as well. The problem is these Interceptors right now are trying to kill a Spore that's being transfused, and obviously that ain't doing very much, and these carriers kind of need to get back home right about yesterday, and they're going to recall into the natural. The uh, third base here just didn't have the, the units ready. Here we go. I mean, these carriers have to beat out the queens, essentially. That's the job. They're not target firing properly, though. Some of them are hitting roaches. You need to hit these queens. You need to get rid of this anti-air. Otherwise, you're just never going to... If the queen count gets too high here, they are just going to be able to just storm on through, and everything else will be fine, and you'll never be able to win this out. He's building tempers, so tempers build faster than carriers. Let's see if that's going to work out for him right now. Again, it comes down to... Okay, so the other way of looking at this... Okay, he's not targeting queens, and that's obviously a very conscious decision of him. He's going to target Ravagers and Roaches, and the idea being... Okay, if I get rid of the Roach Ravager, you can't do much damage quickly, because queens are pretty slow DPS. I just don't know if it's going to be enough, because there's still units out here. Now all your Interceptors are dead. I think this... I mean, I think any sort of aggression is typically very good against that... Um, against this carrier opening, because it's a huge early game investment that doesn't necessarily pay off for you all the time. The Cross of Battle 2 coming up. Tempest still moving forward and just going to see the Spire building in the back uh, from Reynor. So again, that Spire up and rolling. Tempest coming through. They are going to get this Nidus in a moment, so Nidus will go down. I mean, it's a hold. <laughs> as crazy as that is, it's a hold. And I mean, Showtime didn't even lose that much. Like the third Nexus, but he's still got the probe count, so the moment this third base is back up, he has got economy. He just needs to keep this third base alive. Ling's running in, but the carriers are here. Voidria production now underway. Renault making that spy is absolutely the right choice, and you know, going into, like, a mass of Corruptors might just be what you need to just kill off Showtime. Now, Showtime with the Void Race is obviously also the right decision against Corruptors. The problem is, you know, if you have 10 Void Rays, these Corruptors are going to melt. If you have 4 Void Rays, you're not going to notice what your Void Rays do to the Corruptors before they all get one shot down. So, I like this, though. Tempers are going to put themselves to use. Harass a little. Only issue is you're vulnerable to Corruptors, right? 
So when these corruptors start flying in, these tempers are gonna realize, what? Well, oh, and oh no, oh no, he was late. He was running for the bus, and the bus pulled away without him. And not only that, but it actually slammed the other tempest in the door because only one tempest actually got home. Corruptors actually caught that other one that was recalled. So really unfortunate state of affairs for Showtime. It was a hold, but it was an expensive hold in just how much he lost and how much time Reynolds had behind it and just how easily Reynolds was able to transition into something to take this down, I believe. I mean, here we go. Let's see if there's any way you hold this right now as Showtime. I want to just say probably not. I want to just say probably not. Chris Val is going to land. A couple of force fields taking some damage. You can see our Corruptor's still firing away, and yeah, the Tempest again just continue to fire up. The Carrier's coming through. The Lings, the Roaches, the Ravagers are going to go jumping in on top of these rocks, so well, that being picked off, again, the few Archons coming through. Voids are going to be over here, taking a lot of damage as well. I mean, trying to fight off those Corruptors, but I just don't know if you're going to have enough to get through the Queens anyway. There's definitely no stopping the Roach Ravager at this way. There's a ton of it, and the stack defense is a battery that's about to finish up. There is a super battery available, but... Oh, no. He activated on the battery that got biled down. Not that there was much choice. It was the last ditch death, but Raynor is going to take game three. And we are... Five, because we're optimistic about Showtime. We're... Showtime optimists. Shoptimists. Shoptimists. That kind of worked. Perfect. Top right, down a map, is our red Protoss. It's showtime. And the bottom left, our blue Zerg from Clash. Give it up if you're doing a little bit of a dance in a party for Raynor. Maybe if you're a Raynor fan, you don't want this to go to game number five. You just want this to end right now. And we've got a guaranteed ZVT finals, of course. DVT on the other side of the bracket. As we get this one underway. Thought this was the final. Yeah, best of fives in the uh, semis is something we do in the ESL Open Cup and pretty much nowhere else. Um, yeah, no, it's um, it's kind of, kind of honestly like I I won't lie, I didn't like it. I've never liked it actually. I've pretty much always been a, a hater towards the uh, towards this since they they so they changed it when they made the uh, the prize money start on the on the round of four so they changed it so that when the prize money went from a hundred dollars to four hundred dollars they went they changed it to best of five semis so that everybody i think it was because they wanted you to play a best of five to get esl points because esl points were no longer just for first place they were also for first and second place and i don't know i i kind of personally and this is maybe just my own opinion i think okay in fairness we do get a lot of really cool epic best of fives but this tournament is already pretty darn long, right? You know, we are, what, four hours in and we're in the semis. Now, that's not crazy long, don't get me wrong. But we're four hours in and the other semi just started. And it's two best of fives. If that semi goes five games and this, you know, the finals goes five games, this is like a six and a half, seven hour tournament. And that's easily avoided by just playing best of three semis because it just takes out the potential of a super long semifinal. Or it lessens the chance of a super long semifinal, right? I just think in a weekly cup, personally, my own opinion, I think a best of three would be fine. I get it. There is good money on the line. We've seen some awesome best of fives in this tournament as well at the same time. So why not? You know what would also be cool? I think best of three makes for a little bit more upset potential as well. And okay, maybe you want the best players winning all the time. But I think when it's something like a weekly cup, it's not bad to have a little bit more upset potential. See a few more different faces in the finals and stuff. Would it happen all the time? No. Would it happen a little bit more? Yeah. I don't know. Like I say, I'm a bit biased. We also used to, so in these cups, we also used to cast just both semifinals, and they were both best of three. They'd start one after the other. That was also a bonus as well. Um, you know, but obviously we have enough English streamers. We don't really need to do that. But, uh, yeah. No, it's, uh, I don't know. Personally, I don't, uh, I, I feel like for me, it just feels like it just drags it out a little too long, I guess, but... Again, that's probably, that's maybe just me, maybe it's someone else. You guys are just like, Wardy, who cares? You've literally followed a probe around for like two and a half minutes. Well, I have. 
Especially when there's Adepts on the map, and they are going to get three drone kills in the main base. Boom! Three drones go down, two Adepts traded out for them. Once we get this going. But I've also seen... Okay, so here's my other argument as well. I know, Morty, shut up. The other argument is that I feel like we've seen, like, a bunch of, um... of 5s where after, like, a couple games, it's quite clear the other guy's just done. And they're just like, oh, just get me out of this series. Like, I didn't want to play a best of five right now. I'm, I'm done. You know, I'm already too old down. It's late. Just, let's just finish this. And then game three is just terrible, you know? So it may as well have been a best of three. I get it, right? The more games, the better players. It's not that bad, honestly. I'm just, uh... Anyway, everyone's allowed their opinion, right? You can only just... The... You're allowed it. You're just not allowed to voice it in my chat unless I'm odds agree with it. Don't forget that. No, you're allowed to see your opinion as long as it follows the rules. Before someone jumps in and tries to be funny and say something dumb and then complain and that whole scenario kicks off. So I know that happens a lot. Oh, Uncle taking a little more damage. Gonna be pushed away to the side. Robo Forge on the way up here from Showtime. Sorcles all gonna collect together out to the left. Drones just going down. We do see the Twilight Council building. So again, not bad. Adept Oracle combo. All three Oracles still alive. One of them not so healthy, but looking okay. That we go is... The power of triple Oracle is the kind of suicide effect, right? Where you can kind of say, well, I can sit here and really deal damage for a long time and sit through spore shots. He loses one Oracle, but you get four more drones out of it. I don't think you're too upset about that. The power is, by being a bit reckless with three oracles, you still have two of them to control a map, stasis ward, map control, revelation, all that stuff is still available to you, so, and and you've been able to kill the drones, so, I don't mind this so much. It's much worse if you're, like, first oracle dies and you're trying to play a three oracle, because then you don't get that kind of, like, sit around forever in spore crawler range effect, where you absolutely, you absolutely just pick up additional workers. The sentries kind of went to chase the lings down, and that was a mistake. Reno turns back on them, jumps on them. Sentries are going down. Just going to see the Oracle is picking up a few more of those Zerglings. So doing some damage there across the map. Not a lot going on. Hallucination is going to be uh, killed here in a moment. Uncle's back at the top side. Link's still moving around. We do have the Hydras continuing up as well. Storm coming in. Charge is coming up. This feeling's back through the center. Oracles activate again and gonna come through for a few more of these drones. Extra work is going down. These oracles are going to back away. Man, that one is on such low HP. We're going to actually get to see Lurker play, so that's that's actually pretty cool. Let's see the uh, prism gonna load up those few zealots, pull them back a little bit. Archon side temple, a couple of immortals all joining up together as well. That's gonna be seeing our storm coming up. So again, our storm's up, plus two attack on the way in. Again, everything kind of as we expected to be, because Storm Time is just playing against a, a quick Hydra style. So you get storm ready. And now he's gonna have to prepare for the lurkers as well. Now he's already dropping down the fleet beacon. 
So if Showtime feels like Reynolds is just going to build up into those lurkers, and he feels safe enough, and he can get to Fleet Beak, and he can get to Stargates and Carriers, that's not a bad way to play this. He might also, he does start plus one air weapons. I'm just wondering, no Stargates on the way yet. Okay, now he adds them. Well, Mona's like, is there a possibility this just turns into like a, like a uh, mothership? And he just uses the mothership to help him in some of these fights or something like that? No, it's not going to be that at all. I just wonder because the Stargates weren't starting, but he was just he just didn't have the money for them. So yeah, so it's pretty. It's a little greedy from Showtime, right? He's not really close to being maxed out. It's a little risky, but I don't mind it. Like I say, it doesn't feel like Reno is attacking immediately in the future. Now he is maxing out now. But he probably still wants these upgrades to finish for Hydras and Lurkers. So he got a little bit of setup time, enough to get the carriers out. Uh, maybe. Things and uh, lurkers and roaches continuing through. Just gonna see those carriers still coming through. Just gonna keep on producing. And the army of Showtime pushes forward. That's a nice little storm on top of these lurkers. Dealing with that as the overlords dropping into the main base as well, though. And this is where Showtime gonna have to split up to play defense. Mm, this is tough because this main base again shut down. That's his carrier production being stopped as well. So this is no longer a buy time until my carrier's out. This is a clean this the hell up so my carriers get out scenario. That plus two as well, moments away. Cool play from Reynold. Doing pretty decent over there. So just see the lurkers going across through those rocks onto the cannon. I mean, it's a double whammy. You open up the map and you also kill the cannon. Why, why not? Double whammy right there. Okay. Still a few more units pressed on forward. We do see the attempts of uh, a cleanup in the main. And Showtime is with the carry. is going to start cleaning up a bunch of this. And the Overlord drops are fun. We've not seen that in a little while. Look, Hydra drops his super battery. Trying to keep this Archon alive. It's diving head first into Lurkers. Now the Immortals and the Zealots are showing up to try and push through. The Storms to push these Lurkers back. And both players are taking losses here. As Zealots on the other side are going to force some units to turn around as well. Reno gets back here pretty quick, I guess, from this base to this base. Ain't so far to run. But maybe this could have been a chance to go back in the main, although it's a well-defended main base. And if you don't have the money for the Zealots right now to warp in extras, probably ain't worthwhile against the spine crawls that are already up. Gonna see the carriers continue to come through. The plus two air weapons coming in. Spires building. The spines are coming. All of that coming through. This. Just see the gun firing away. Another hydra gets picked off. Gets flung to the sky. This army of Showtime still hanging around. Toward the bottom right. Here comes the prism of Showtime into the main base again. Zelda's gonna unload and they're gonna start going. In for these uh, spine crawlers, so damage being done. Like I say, once you have the additional zealot warpins, this feels like a fairly okay position to fight. It's just initially didn't have that money. Showtime now maxed out. Carrier's been somewhat aggressive over here. And as the zealots are gonna come through, slicing through a couple of these roaches. Back on the top side, carrier's getting active again. Roaches trying to break through a couple of these stalkers. Zealots are gonna complete. 11 Corruptors and 7 Lurkers are currently building. The army of Showtime moving through the middle of the map. Away we go. Picking off, an uh, picking off another Creep Tumor there. As just have these uh, Interceptors out the front. The High Templar. Want to try and see what they can do. Moving around as well. Going to drop another Revelation down on the couple of Spores on the Overlord. And looking reasonable at that and just going to be seen on the far left. And Prism being chased away. I mean, this is getting to a real intriguing part of the game with the Corruptors out, Locus out. Raynor should be able to hold on. He can also fight the Carriers. And we're really getting to a stage where these extra bases to be taken are really far out there. Even this one on the right side for Showtime is a bit of a stretch. And that's just his fifth base. Of course, he's paying full attention to the left side of the map right now. So it's never meant to be easy for him to hold on over here. Static defense will do all right given the, you know, given how outnumbered it is. It didn't do half bad at trying to hold this off and try to find some time. Reno is going to continue on to that Nexus, continue to pick his way through this. It's going to fall. So Nexus will go down. 
Here we go. Our duck number one, but double feedback, so... Okay. Actually, he loses a uh, Viper as well, so... Oh, not bad. I mean, you lose a carry, but you get a Viper. You clean out on this right side. Showtime might just continue down this bottom side, and... Go from there. He's gonna see a couple of Overlords that are basically just free pickings at this stage. So we'll go for that. Here comes the Lurker Army of Rain or out up the top. Gonna start making a bit of a play forward here and just gonna see the extra voids building, cannons are coming through. Now I've got Showtime's force. Starting to press forward just a little bit. There's a little revelation to go down and tanking up those lurkers. As we jump onto the rest of this. Here we go. You know, see those lurkers getting picked off, these few spores being picked away at. I like this so far. So far, so good. I'm just going to see this uh, army going to recall back home. He's got a couple of lurkers in his bases, so he's just going to go and deal with those instantly. With everything, though, and that's a little scary, although I guess... Yeah, I mean, I guess quickest, easiest way to deal with it. And Does he give up pressure? Yeah, a little bit. Does he let these lurkers come forward? Kind of, but he actually has immortals and cannons and archons left here, so... Maybe it ain't so bad, I want to say. Let's see, the Lurkers get to burrow in a position, which is obviously one benefit, at least for Raynor. Because now, if you want to bring these carriers in to clean them up, you've got to dodge the Corruptors, which are to the center. They're actually not really in position if those carriers made the move, but of course, Raynor uh, didn't show these to Showtime either, so he also didn't quite know that maybe he could have jumped on the Lurkers right then and there. Well, the drone's still building, the Spire's still coming up, the additional spores continuing through as well as Showtime... It's down in the middle of this. We are going to take another hatch to the upper left-hand side. Drones mining up a storm. And the Voidre Hawk on a mortal army. Making its way to the left as well. These carriers coming in to join it. Sixty minutes in. I mean, it feels like any fight right now could break out and actually be very deadly. As, uh... You know, it just takes a little bit of miscontrol, and you know, in armies like these, to just see one of them just be completely obliterated. Uh, at this level of play, you can't make mistakes, so... It's a very tense moment, because fighting in right now, Showtime kind of says, let's go. Reno and Baru says, like, no, and then <laughs> Showtime's like, okay, I guess not. Uh, basically, it was just the difference of those units backing away toward the, um... The difference of the units just backing away ever so slightly towards that uh, side. And uh, they got back in range of the static defense, which is obviously very useful. Corruptor still building the greatest spire coming up. We just have this army of Showtime still moving its way around the south here, so pushing itself down towards the bottom. There's a couple of Zelds going to charge through and jump on top of these drones as well, so a few of those going down right away. Okay, not bad as well. I mean, a couple of workers, and I tell you what, there's no army down here from Raynor, so it feels like he's just about, Showtime's just about to waltz on into this base and just deny it. Comes straight through, a couple of spores, obviously not going to last very long. Yeah, just going to wander in here and pick this all off. Now, the Corruptors are showing up, but just a little late. This base absolutely goes down. The High Templar being chased by a couple of lings are protected. Obviously, storms, feedback's very important. You want to keep these Templar around. As the base gets out, picks off a lurker or two as he goes, does lose an oracle, I believe, there with the abduct going down. And that's pretty much it, right? Another storm or so onto those lurkers. Oh, beautiful storms hitting every, you know, hitting a lot every single time. These storms are fighting some serious damage. Resource has lost his 415k to 22k. Short time is playing a really well, you know, really well thought out, efficient game so far. Really, uh, making sure he's not taking any bad fights or anything along those lines. Into the center we go as whoa, Voidra is activating, storms coming down. Those corruptors get chased the hell out of there. Get off of my lawn. Well, I don't know if Protoss really has a lawn. I guess Zerg has a lawn with the uh, creeps fed, but and Zerg that goes running goes scarfing back home. Zelda just pick off the Hydra there. I'm not sure how impactful that might be. Is there another one on the map? There is not, so you can't actually make more Hydras just now. Might not be immediately problematic, but in the long term, something you want to replace. Those Zelds are still just moving through, by the way. There is like a Lurker left over here. 
This is going to kill the Rotoron as well. Andrew Dan is now on the way up again from Raynor. Look at the bank of Showtime, though. You know, talked about these external bases being a little bit tougher to hold on to, but Showtime, he got over that hurdle. You know, he got past that part of the game. He got this base up, now he's taking this base, and Raynor just ain't done anything about it. He slowly expanded up this side, which is going to give him some good gas income. Double gas mining here with the rich Vespine. But, of course, half a mineral base, so not as many minerals. And, of course, in the end, right, this is essentially just a half base. You know, he could have two gases here that are regular, and then you'd still mine just as much gas. This just mines you more gas with less drones, so it doesn't exactly do, like, any better for Raynor than if he'd just gone up here with double extractors, so it's not super crazy. On 46 drones, it helps a lot, though, because, again, every drone's going to count, so if you can save a few drones from mining gas, well, bonus for you. You can keep the mineral count going a little bit better as well. Uh-oh. Parasite bomb's coming down. The carrier's kind of going to start fighting. There's another Parasite Bomb there before the final feedback went through. I'm a little worried for those Vipers that are moving forward. Storm's coming down. Raynor wants to go for this right now. Showtime realizes the trouble he is in. He recalls out of there. Oh, ho, ho. he's going to need that bank right now to rebuild off of that. This Archon should turn around, kill some of these Corruptors, man. They are low HP. Archon, get to work. Stop running. But, you know, this is your dream scenario. Surely these Corruptors are low HP. If he can just get some more units onto them, there's so much he can do here. And of course, the spray is not going to do too much. Obviously, one cannon ain't going to do much either. There's enough to dissuade Reno from committing there. Showtime has a long way to go to rebuild as he is in the main base, killing off more structures. Important structures at that. Look, Den just fell. He's also losing the mining up over on this side as these corruptors are trying to find an angle to A, get out, and B, maybe cause the spray and Nexus are so down at the same time. Well, Showtime's bank really is evaporating quickly as he rebuilds off of that. That army gra <laughs> drop, yeah. This is why I wanted to see this army graph and see the drop off right there. That's, um... That's something, my friends. That is something. Look, there's a few hydras up the top side. Look at Burrow up. A couple of uh, units going down. I mean, now Reynor is going to be able to push his way in up here. Put him in a position where he's able to take down this Nexus. I mean, Showtime is trying to expand in the bottom right, as is Reynor, to be fair. So these bases are being taken as well in the bottom right corner. I mean, Showtime just shouldn't allow that to happen. You can't let Reynor take that base, but... I mean, I guess it's very disjoint from Creep. It's unlikely it would really stay alive. These Corruptors want to take a chance of just denying a base of Showtime. They've both done the same thing. Like, you know, Raynor has expanded, you know, here, where Showtime might not realize. And Showtime expanded down here, where Raynor might not realize. And it's working out pretty well. Raynor is going to have his hatchery found. Unless we set that up. And into the middle of the map we go with a Zealot Archon force moving forward. Going across, Archons are underneath there, but Lurk is obviously going to shut down the Archons. So the Archons can't just go jumping in on top of these uh, Corruptors or anything. Top left is Zealot, going to pick a way through that hatchery. A couple Hydras coming in. Do clean up on the right side. This Zealot Archon Immortal Forces pulling back a little bit. Just going to be seeing this army pulling all the way back to the far right. Now here comes the Hydra Lurker Force, which is going to try and deny this base again. Showtime is kind of still mining because of this bottom right base, and I really just don't think. I mean, Reynolds just has no clue about it. He just does not realize that Showtime is mining right under his nose, essentially. Now, in this game swung heavily when Reynor won this fight, because now Showtime's bank is just gone. He let up a lot of pressure, which has allowed Reynor to retake a bank of his own. And uh, that's something I don't think Reynor's really had the luxury of this game, like a bank. Like, he's been sat on 40 drones for an extremely long time. You can see Showtime over the last 10 minutes in general was just majorly effective in mining compared to Reynor. And, and obviously, before that big fight, Showtime was trading way better than Reynor too, so that's where a lot of Reynor's resources were going to.
Cryptus and Void Rays are going to go splitting apart just slightly here as... Now the Storm or two coming down, but the High Temple get hit by the Lurkers. That's painful. A Disruptor is almost complete as it floats into the sky. Well, these Disruptors just dying while stationary. They're floating in the skies, though. They're still together. Like, if we can just stay together, we can fire one more shot. Don't fall apart. Don't blow into pieces. Disruptors trying to do anything and everything for Showtime right now is... Uh, I mean, these probes are being massacred. There goes the, the any further economy of Showtime. Showtime's army... Is very much so what is standing and that is it. But it's a few Void Rays and it's a hell of a lot of Zealots, guys. I don't think 36 Zealots are going to win you this game. I don't think that does it for you here. Of course, at the same time, you could argue 34 Corruptors are of Raynor maybe doesn't do much for you either. That is a, a fair argument, I would say. Gonna see those HDs moving around, dropping another feedback or so. What time is gonna move it up into the center of the map again? Hydra Lurker. Out on the bottom right, the corrupt is coming through too. Hmm. All right, well, Voidrays are going to clean up this base in the top left. I mean, this base, uh, this game not done yet. I mean, Showtime probably uh, probably thinks he can win this off the ground army, I'd imagine, at this stage. Like I say, those Corruptors, Great Spire is going to be the answer. You can make Broodlords, and then this ground army is obviously going to be less powerful than it is right now. So Showtime is kind of on a timer. Problem is, when you're on a timer against 25 Lurkers, <laughs> the timer generally isn't on your side. <sighs> oh, my God. Is Reynold going to finally find out about this base? This really is the reason why Showtime is doing so well still in this game. The fact he's still got that base mining away here. Storms go down. Lurkers taking shots. Disruptor shot hits. Connects on two of those Lurkers. They push forward here. Reynold's going to go for this. And he's going to try and just chase this army down. Because he has had enough. These Zelda's are going to make a play. But if they go this way, they're going to run right through a bunch of Lurkers. You're going to see that hatch again. And Reynold just keeps skipping out on this base. But he'd rather have a fresh base. If he is going to spend money on a hatchery. 26 and a half minutes. And this may be it as Showtime is being hunted down. He is running and running. But never turning around to fight against these lurkers. And that my friends is probably a bit of a problem to say the least. This uh, group of lurkers continue to do well. Eight drones going down across the map. As the zealots do put in some work to be fair. The greatest spire is there though. That would have been the target for the zealots. They could have killed the Great Aspire, stopped these Corruptors from actually being useful. Maybe, just maybe, this is going to turn into a base trade, apparently, for the moment, at least. Maybe you still can kill the Great Aspire. Obviously, if you... Well, there's Lurkers on the high ground, though. Well, there's Lurkers on the high ground, but there's only... There's Void Rays here. There's no anti-air there. Uh, Showtime's going to turn it back around. He's trying to protect his High Templar, which are auto-attacking to safety. Lurkers are going to run in on top of this. Here come the Voidrays to try and fight. To be fair, these Lurkers are all kind of on their own. Here come the Corruptors. Archon say, no, oh, get out of here. And those Corruptors have to turn it back around. Showtime, I think, takes a much better fight right now. That abduct was very lame. It literally made the uh, Voidray do a little bit of a hop. I'm just going to be seeing now the Lurker putting some more damage out. Archon's to the right-hand side. Oh my goodness, is Showtime still maybe in this? Reno, Reno, Reno. I mean, he spent his money now, so never mind Broodlords anymore. Never mind Broodlords. Maybe just afraid Broodlords were going to be way too immobile to actually win in any sort of actual base trade scenario. So it's Archon's Disruptors going through. Disruptor shots go in. One of Ducks does go off. The other Disruptor does land its connection. Showtime fought into all the lurkers, though, and that was, my friends. As they do say, not quite it. Oh, Showtime, you had me believing, man. <gasps> Raynor is going to find this base, and he's going to see how mined out it is, and he's going to be freaking annoyed. How has he never checked the bottom right of the map this entire time? That's why Showtime's still in the game, Raynor. He's gonna, obviously going to know that. He doesn't need me to shout it through, through the screen at him or anything. But, uh, yeah, it's kind of crazy that Raynor didn't come down here to some point earlier just to check because... You know, he denied the top bases a while ago. Oh, man. Showtime needed to play run around and, and run away a little longer. 
And again, maybe if he just chased those lurkers down when they were over here, he could have got rid of all of those for free. Yeah, but he wanted to go save the High Templar, right? And that's obviously an important thing as well, to save his HTs that were out of position. Oh man, what a what a freaking game, guys. What a freaking game. Now the Archon's just gonna morph in here, do you see? Oh no, oh no, not like this, the High Templar! All starting to go down. A couple of Archons going to try and morph. Showtime's going to try and fight this. If you can get through these lurkers, maybe there is somehow a way. Blinding Cloud forces the, the Archons to run further through. GG is called. And it's 30 minutes to take down Showtime on 2,000 atmospheres for Raynor. But my goodness, what a freaking game. What a series we got out of these two. We got the semi-final of the day-to-day. -day. Call us lucky.